see how these players are, you know, finding out as we get closer towards the final. Confirmation there that Gustavo Wada has made it into the final, which means there's just two players left to be decided. We've got Frank with his Whimsicott deck and Pedro with Rapid Strike Urshifu. Yeah, and once again, it's a different approach from the rest. Pedro has gone against the grain and he's playing a 1-1 line of Elder Goss in his list. Gossifler essentially acts as a fifth Sobble. That's what he affectionately likes to call it because it also has a call for family attack. And Elder Goss is a great card that can cherry pick some energies out your deck when needed. So that could be a really helpful card, especially because it grabs those basic energies, which are so important against Frank's deck specifically. Yes, absolutely. Of course, you know, Frank's deck with Whimsicott stopping you attached no special energy, so getting those basic can be absolutely crucial. The Rapid Strike energy is not going to do you a huge amount of good. Whimsical is going to be stopping you. And, you know, we, we get another chance to see Whimsical. We did cast a Whimsical <laughs> game yesterday, and it did not go to plan, I think would be a, a nice way to put it. But we have seen it since on stream. We've seen it throwing its stuff, doing its thing. And, you know, to see Whimsical in the top four of an international is it's such a strange feeling. Yeah, and hey, the record speaks for itself. Don't take anything into account with that one loss that Frank had on stream. It's one of his only losses the entire weekend, and I don't think he could have drawn worse, uh, even if his <laughs> opponent was choosing the cards for him. So uh, I think uh, he's got to have a better rub of the green this time around. It's a matchup that you've got to think that he's slightly favoured in, although there's still a good amount of basic energy attackers that Pedro could use. Although Pedro is hitting for weakness, the Whimsicott is such a low base damage output, and especially with the likes of double turbo energy, it may not even take a KO on an Urshifu, so it's not like an invalid option for Pedro. It could still come in in here and there and gale thrust every now and then because it is still playing Cheryl at the end of the day. No, absolutely. And, you know, crucially, 330 HP, 10 away from being one hit KO'd by that basic attack on Whimsicott. That can be a big deal, but it looks like because we stacked up the top four games, we get to go straight to the next top four game, Joe. Yeah, I'm sure these guys would have been watching the other top four bracket and uh, really just been wanting to go. That, I think when you're in the tournament and you're being held back for uh, watching, you know, for 75 or so minutes, uh, you're just really just wanting to get rolling and uh, get into the action. Of course, it's great to have have that break, that mental time to yourself where you can sort of calm yourself down after a big top eight win. And uh, now you can prepare yourself mentally into this next challenge. Two fantastic players, Pedro, of course, a Europe, and not a European international champion, but an international champion nonetheless. And Frank, this has to be one of his best tournament finishes so far. And he could go even further all the way to the finals. Yeah, absolutely. You know, two decks that we were not thinking about at the start of the tournament. You know, the Raptor Star Curse, if you don't get me wrong, that was on the yeah. radar because of what happened in Liverpool with Robin Schultz. Yeah. But we did not really expect it to be a deck and that is the story of the tournament. You know, five of the eight decks in Top Cut were Rapid Strike Urshifu. So there's absolutely no doubt that that is, you know, the story of the tournament as it stands. That is the deck that took us by surprise. But, you know, Whimsicott's hoping to come and ruin all of that. Sure, <laughs> Rapid Strike Urshifu may have been five of the eight decks in Top Cut, but if Whimsicott goes and wins, I think that's going to be what people are talking about. Yeah, and Frank could be going Urshifu VMAX into Urshifu VMAX into Urshifu VMAX. That's a, that's a pretty nice top cut for him, if you ask me. So, yeah, uh, there's no reason why he can't do it again here. Uh, fantastic stuff from him already in the tournament. He is very proficient with his archetype, and uh, he's already come across Urshifu once before in the tournament. He said it was one of his most difficult series, actually, um, even with the disruption he has at his disposal with Crushing Hammer, with a ton of Marnie, and even a couple Avery in his list. These are going to be the tools that Frank tries to use in order to stop Pedro. No, absolutely. And, you know, just practiced against Tord in top eight with that rapid strike. Bad practice, huh? <laughs> I know, right? We're going to have some testing. Now, as we go and have a look at the... Um at the, uh, the establishment that they are underneath the wrong players, unfortunately. Pedro Eugenio Torres, we've got world's top four in 2018, Latin American Internationals top four in 2018, Oceania International Championship in 2018, and Stuttgart Regional Champion. That's not bad going. Yep, and uh, we will try and get that fixed for you. But Frank there on the right, we must stress, is the player who has got an OCIC top eight finish before. But as we've said, he's always been in that top 16 contention and hasn't made it into the top eight enough. And he is so pumped to be here in top four. I've seen him strutting his stuff around the halls and he's just buzzing to be here. But he can carry on a deep run with his Whimsicott if all goes to plan. And actually, the way we're going to fix it, we're not going to fix the graphic for you. We're going to switch the places for you instead. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, whatever works, Joe, whatever works. We're going to get them in the right seats. We're going to get the right names up, and it is going to be absolutely beautiful. We've got to have everything perfect. It's top four of an internationals. It is going to be absolutely beautiful. Now we have the right Look names. Look at that. It, it works perfectly. Everything's aligned. This is fantastic. There's confirmation uh, of our players sat in their correct positions now. <laughs> and uh, looks like they're getting that opening coin flip and uh, debating uh, by Frank here who's going to be the player to go first. You've got to think that he's uh, happy going first as Whimsicott because he's an archetype that likes to evolve to get into his main attackers here. Yeah, absolutely. And we've said, you know, unlike some of these Whimsicott decks, Frank is not playing in a really any energy acceleration. So getting that basic V down, getting that energy attached turn one, that is absolutely crucial. When Whimsicott gets rolling, it doesn't take much to keep going. You kind yeah. of just announce the same attack every turn, flip the odd crushing hammer, Marnie when it's important, hope you've got an EXP share down if you're going to get KO'd. It's not a high maintenance deck like no. some of the others out there. But those first couple of turns, and that's what we saw when we streamed his game yesterday, but he got one attack off in two games <laughs> because he couldn't get not the ideal. energy down. Yeah. And his opponent was just cherry picking, you know, using boss's orders, KOing that Whimsicott and just didn't let him get going. Yeah, and I think Whimsical V-Star is definitely one of these archetypes that has really vulnerable early games. But the good news is Pedro's archetype isn't very aggressive in those opening stages. So no. Frank can play quite greedy in those openings and just like nonchalantly slam a Whimsicott in the active, attached to it, knowing that it's not going to get KO'd or anything like that. It's not really in danger in that early game. So it means that he needs even less in those opening stages to execute his early game strategy and just get that V-Star rolling. No, absolutely. That's an excellent point. So we do see the players shuffling up here. It seems like Pedro is ready to go. Frank, I believe, might have taken a mulligan there. Yeah, by the looks of things, especially because we already see the prizes down for Pedro, is going to be a mulligan by the looks of things. Um, Frank only plays a handful of basic Pokemon because he only is attacking with that Whimsicott V-Star, and it's just the big barrel engine to fall back on here. As we are seeing the prizes come out, there is one of his uh, big barrels finding the prizes, and for Pedro, a couple of his darkness energy. He plays five copies, but as we know, basic energy are vital in this matchup. Yeah, having basic energy prized is not an ideal situation against a deck that's shutting off your ability to attach your special energy. It's not the end of the world. There's other energy in there. And, you know, there's always those early turns where you can potentially get those energy down if there's no other options. Although, of course, fan of waves will kind of ruin that. So there is a fist bump and we are off. We've got a Bidoof for Frank and a Rapid Strike Urshavu V for Pedro. Uh, it is going to be Frank who kicks off this game. He already has energy in hand, and we're seeing an Ultra Ball immediately. So Frank is at the very least going to be able to grab himself a Whimsicott V straight into play. He's also got the time to uh, look through his prize cards if he wants to. But no, he's just getting on with business right now. <laughs> he's just said, I basically only need Whimsicotts. Uh, let's go ahead and grab one, and I'll carry on. Maybe he has even more search uh, in his uh, hand here to carry on looking through his deck. But yeah, he's got the ideal turn one. He's got his Whimsicott. He's got an energy attachment already in hand floating around. Uh, so yeah, pretty happy. Pretty happy. Would be nice to get another Bidoof down. Of course, we know that the Bibarel is prized, but you know, you never know when you're going to take it out your prizes. Having them down is a big advantage. Sure, Rapid Strike Urshifu can take him off the bench, but you don't mind if he starts attacking with Rapid Strike Urshifu. So we see the air balloon, retreat the Bidoof, Whimsicott yeah. in the active. That's a good start. I really like that as well because he's uh, protecting his Bidoof from a Hooper. That's one of the only early game aggressive options uh, that Pedro could have gone for. Um, and also, even just a Strafe could have put the Bidoof to uh, 20, oh sorry, 10 damage away from a KO, and that could have allowed some crazy Metajam lines later down the line. So, oh, yes. uh, yeah, uh, it's really good to protect that Bidoof. Very smart from Frank. As Pedro kicks off with a Sonya here, can start looking through his own prize cards. This is, we must stress, an archetype that plays an absurd amount of one-offs. <laughs> so you absolutely do need to look through your prize cards carefully and ensure that everything that you need, especially in this matchup, is going to be accessible to you. And it is also going to allow Pedro to get some basic Pokemon down. Looks like he's eyeing up that Gormandai Snorlax, as well as one Sobble, as we start seeing Pedro counting basic energies. It's not always something that you intuitively think of, but certainly important in this matchup, because these are going to be the cream of the crop for Pedro when he's getting locked out of his Rapid Strike energy. Absolutely. And it's always kind of interesting, you know, that Snorlax... We've seen so much Snorlax this weekend. <laughs> it's a card that fell out of favor. It's come back now. And it's just, it's so good for those early turns and these setup decks. Because, you know, players like Pedro know, look, I am going to be able to outplay my opponent. I'm going to be able, when I get set up, things are going to go much, much better. But I need those couple of early turns to set up. 
So why not a Snorlax? And you know what? Maybe I'll give up a prize. But, you know, we've seen players playing stuff like Cynthia's Ambition and Raihan that actually sometimes giving up a prize is an advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And will Pedro have any means of getting this uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu onto the bench where it's a little bit safer? And will Pedro be able to a execute a Keep Calling or a Gorman Dies? It may just be a strafe to protect the Urshifu, if nothing else. But we actually see the Tower of Waters. It's obviously a one-off. Most of the deck has one-offs. <laughs> um, but that's going to be a great way to protect his Urshi here. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, you have to protect the Urshi because a Whimsicott VMAX and a double turbo energy would have gotten a two prize KO. You cannot leave that Urshifu V in the active. Of course, you'd rather not start with it, honestly. It's not an ideal starter. But that Tower of Waters gives you free retreat. Snorlax goes into the active. We're going to see a Gorman dies drawing. Couple Just of cards. Not, yeah. Not, not loads, but it's enough. And that's going to, you know, put Pedro in a decent position moving forward. Certainly not a powerhouse turn one, but we've seen worse. And Frank out the gate hits that double turbo energy. I don't think he has any means of searching it out of his deck. He just plays four copies and hopes to hit them in a timely manner. And he's been able to do so in this instance. Does he have any other plays here? He's got the Peony, which he's opting to go for over the Professor's Research because he may just be grabbing double incense here. You can guarantee your V-Star and guarantee the big barrel. So you're still ending it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to see here. Why not just go ahead and guarantee your draw engine as well as your attacker rather than risking it via the research? No, I like this a lot. You know, Peony does make you discard your hand, which is not ideal. But when your hand is the other supporter you can't play anyway, that's not much of a downside. Then you get your Bibarel, you get your Whimsicott V-Star. And actually, this is really quite nice. You've got your attacker, you've got your draw engine. And th these cards from Bibarel are going <laughs> Pedro <laughs> having a look. <laughs> <laughs> He's a showman, if nothing else. Oh, absolutely. These Bibarel cards are going to build up over the next couple of turns, far more than something like a, a Professor's Research would. Obviously, you need to start getting some more basic. Whimsicott, you know, Whimsicott with an energy would be nice. Obviously not this turn you've attached. Sure. But Whimsicott with an experience share. Yep. Although we have seen one hit the discard already and there's only two in the deck. Yeah, I do think that, like we said, Pedro's deck doesn't really get rolling early enough for Frank to have an issue. As long as he's just manually attaching on every turn, he's never really going to miss an attack. This Whimsicott's probably going to stick around for at least a couple turns here, as we are going to see the industrious incisors for the fresh five. And is there going to be any extra help for Frank here? Can there be any disruption with Crushing Hammer as well? There's the EXP share that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, drew into his last copy. Not too bad, and he is going to initiate that prize race and knock out Snorlax cleanly here with the Trick Wind. That means Pedro is no longer able to attach Special Energy this turn or Tool Cards this turn as well. And that's going to be an attack that Frank announces throughout the game. Yeah, and that's something that we've got to watch as casters, they've got to watch as players, and the judges have to be very eagle-eyed about. Very easy to forget, but there's no special energy, and there are no Pokémon tools. So, you know, Pedro's deck, it, it's not really reliant on special energy like some, but it's still nice to have those options, and they're closed off. With those energy prized, you know, we see Avery drawing three cards, <laughs> but Frank's bench is it's not even three Pokemon, it's only two. No, I don't think an Avery is ever going to be awkward for Frank, because even when he is putting additional p uh, basics down, like, you only need, like, a couple or three Whimsicott at most, and, like, the Bibarel's only here to help out, so uh, <laughs> the Avery just being a draw three here. People, you know, in a competitive environment may laugh at you for just playing draw three supporters. Typically, they're seen in theme decks and not all that powerful, but in this instance, Pedro is using it mostly for disruption, but in this niche scenario, he just needs three more cards, and hey, it's helped him get an incense for a VMAX here, so he could be firing off a Gale for us this turn and starting to pressurize the Whimsicott. Absolutely, that does worry me a little bit because obviously you've got that weakness. Like we've said, the numbers do not work out very well for Frank. Frank is going to be 10 damage short of a KO, and I'm going to go ahead and assume that Pedro's playing a one off Cheryl. Of course, he is. <laughs> it's so... a one off, of course, he's playing it. <laughs> But that does give him the option of potentially hitting, taking that hit, but then healing off. It's, it's really not the game plan you want. Hey, let's keep going 10 HP away from being KO'd and then Sheriling. But yeah. if, if that's what you've got to use, that's what you've yeah, got to I use. I mean, it's the difference between a KO and not a KO. So it doesn't matter how close uh, Frank is at the end of the day. Why not go for it? Uh, we are going to see Pedro also able to quick wall away his Medicham V, grabbing a second Sobble. We can see the tower once again coming into play. Fantastic use of it from Pedro early on here. And uh, we are also going to see his first shady dealings uh, of the game with the Sobble that was already in play. 
Yeah, getting that Sobble down, uh, excuse me, getting that Drizzle down on the Sobble, letting you search for any trainer card you want. There's still not much of a setup here from Pedro. You know, you're relying on using that Urshifu and, you know, hoping that you can be 10 damage away from being KO'd. What would be nice is to get some other attackers out who could maybe put in a, a bit more of a shift, maybe get a little more damage on the board, take a hit, not give up free prizes would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, at the very least, he's been able to develop an additional Sobble here so that he can just cherry pick more and more cards as he's going to have to throughout this game. He's going to be looking for things like Bird Keeper for the following turn and whatnot so that he can try and pivot this Urshi when needed. Cheryl as well is going to be a card he's going to have to look for here and there. So definitely going to require the shady dealings to see him through as it looks like he's just gripping onto a number of scoop up net here. Um, which is basically all he has in his hand. So we'll just be launching a Gale Thrust here. I think it's pretty much the most pressure he can put on with his deck against the Whimsical. And as now they have learnt from Frank's deck, he's not playing any damage modifier. He's not playing a choice belt, which would be a big deal in this instance. Oh, very big. Um, but yeah, Pedro doesn't have to be afraid of it. No, and that is absolutely huge. It basically means that Frank, you know, even when he's hitting for weakness, he has to accept that it's going to be a two-hit KO. There's no backup yeah. attackers. There's no damage modification. You know, there are tricks like your experience share and fan of waves and crushing hammer, but actually a lot of the time Frank's deck is very straightforward. He wants a uh, Whimsicott VMAX, he wants free energy on, and he wants to just announce that attack turn after turn after turn. Hopefully you get some KOs on Pokemon that are weak, hopefully you're locking decks down that are reliant on special energy, and then sometimes you end up in really awkward situations. And when you look at these Pokemon V-Star and VMAX, and there's, you know, 10 or 20 damage between some of them, this is huge. 320 would KO a Mew. Yeah, and interestingly enough, we see Frank attach an additional energy to the active Pokemon rather than to his benched V-Star. So that could be uh, indicating that he's going to be going for his uh, V-Star power attack this turn uh, rather than the Trick Wind here. So that could be a way that he can actually uh, KO Pedro's active, possibly. Potentially. I mean, it does 60 damage for each energy you've got on you. It is your V-Star power. It can actually hit any Pokemon on the field. It does not have to be the active. So that's always kind of an advantage. But, you know, it is any energy. And we do see there getting the KO, yeah, doubling huge. up. Did he need the fourth energy, though? Yeah, I think he had to because of the reduction of the double turbo. I think that's what we needed there. Ah, yes, yeah. of course, the double turbo energy. So there we did see the fourth energy. It's not a V-Star power. I am a huge fan of very often. But right now, it absolutely did the trick. It did, it did that huge amount of damage, got the KO with the weakness, and now Frank's actually only got two prizes remaining, so <laughs> there wasn't any damage modification, yeah. but there was the wonderfully named Fluffball Star. Yeah, fantastic use of it, and uh, it wasn't something that I had on my radar, and I don't think Pedro necessarily was thinking about it either, and uh, it really changes the map here. Pedro is going to go ahead and go for Shady Dealings. It's time to start using your one prize Pokemon and try and get the most out of your um, Galarian Moltres, I think. We're going to see the uh, Shady Dealings for the big upgrade of Shady Dealings. So Pedro <laughs> can start piecing together a combination that allows him to get into this Moltres in the active position here. Uh, we already see a Sobble in the active position, uh, which is free retreating via a Tower of Waters that could turn into a Drizzle later. So we are going to see Sonya grabbing some basic energies out by the looks of things. Uh, the Quick Balls are already in hand so that we can see that Galarian Moltres. We can see the Malevolent Charge Fiery Wrath combo to finish off this uh, Whimsicott here. Absolutely. All you're going to need is a third energy, and there is there the energy is. search to guarantee it. Good. And now we're going to be able to get the Moltres. We're going to be able to get the free energy. The Tower of Waters is already giving Sobble that free retreat. So and then the KO is a given at this stage. And with Frank having taken four prizes, that's 220 damage. So Whimsicott only needs three damage counters on. Funnily enough, a strafe for free would have <laughs> actually put the Whimsicott in range at this stage. But these are the way, this is the way it shakes out in the end. It, you don't want to give up free prizes, but it is nice to be able to take two in response. The thing is, a Whimsicott on the bench has that EXP share, yeah. which is going to be huge because it means that that Whimsicott is going to be able to just attach a double turbo energy and then start attacking next turn. It still forces 
Frank to find that double turbo energy, and there's not been many draws from uh, the big barrel, and I think that's what Pedro's banking on. He's saying, Frank, you've taken enough prizes where my Galarian Moltres is dangerous. If I knock out the key threat here, and then you miss the double turbo energy, and I can target down the other Whimsicott, maybe I can just blow through your entire board. So it's really what Pedro is banking on here. He's getting free retreat access again from that Tower of Waters. He's got immense value from that one stadium card that he found so early on here. And uh, we can also see the scoop up net for the Inteleon, and he can still get one more shady dealing in this turn. Absolutely. And we see you know, that scoop up net is huge. It means you get to reuse a Drizzle. It means you get to reuse the Inteleon. And now that Inteleon is, are we going to get Clara? Yeah. So this is allowing Pedro to say, if Frank does get the double turbo energy next turn, he's going to try and reload that Moltres one more time and hope to deal with double Whimsicott because Frank's board really isn't prepared for two KOs back to back here. It no. would mean that um, there's no real reprieve um, and he just doesn't have enough energy acceleration to continue with Whimsies here. No, back to back KOs of Pedro would probably end this game. The first KO puts a psychic energy through EXP share yep. onto your bench Whimsicott. You attach a double turbo, you're good to go. But that means you're not attaching to the third Whimsicott. So if we see back to back KOs, Frank is not going to be able to attack with that third Whimsicott. So. Pedro only actually needs one more KO yeah. to win this game. It's actually like a board-centric situation. It's not really, you know, you're behind on prizes, but it doesn't matter too much because you can simply stop Frank from attacking altogether, and that can give you an easy way to the victory. So Pedro been very intelligent here by forcing Frank early on and just, you know, putting him on a clock, just saying you can only attach one energy per turn, even with this e experience share helping out that little bit, you may just run out of Whimsicott to hit into me. So Pedro's really allowed Frank to take those prizes early with the Urshifu and uh, put him in an awkward position. And uh, Pedro's hand is really in a great situation. I'd love to see Frank try and work towards a Marni here. That could put a big spanner in the works. Yeah, absolutely it could. So it does seem like we're getting that Crobat V coming down which is, is largely irrelevant in terms of Pedro's prize map. There is a Whimsicott to take down, but it does mean a slightly easier KO. And then we've got that uh, Ordinary Rod coming down, getting some of that energy back into the deck. But it's double turbo, and if Frank misses a double turbo here, then the game, you know, Pedro can all but win on a boss's orders at that stage. It's, it really is getting very, very awkward. So it, 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 needs to be a, it needs to be a double turbo energy here. Yeah, even if uh, if not the case, he can really try and disrupt with the Marnie. I think that's also going to be huge here. We're going to see a Chromat dig for a few cards, and we'll see what he can come up with. He hits the double turbo energy. That's not bad a way to start here. Can he combine it with some hand disruption? Well, he's got Path to the Peak. And the and Marnie. And the Marnie. That's yeah. huge. Pedro had come up with everything. His hand was actually pretty perfect. He even took two basic darkness energy from prize cards, which would have helped out even more. Uh, but Frank here, he's going to be able to get a response KO with Trickwind. Once again, re-establish the soft lock that he's got on Pedro and also disrupt that hand. And let's see if Pedro has anything. He's drawn back into at least the Evolution Incense and Scoop Up Net. So I think he's done really well from the Marnie, to be fair. Yeah, we do see Pedro already putting the energy to the discard pile. He's like, this really doesn't matter, does it? He's just, Frank's actually just playing at these crushing hammers so that he can draw more from the yeah. barrel because you know that there's always going to be a trick win KO here. So Pedro was like, yeah, I may as well put these in the discard pile proactively. It really doesn't change much. No, absolutely not. So here does come your Whimsicott. It's going to do enough damage, even with that double turbo energy, to get the kill on Galarian Moltres. Frank is going to be one prize away from taking a 1-0 lead here. And really now, it's over to Pedro. Can he establish that other Galarian Moltres? Were it not for the money, I think we're both thinking that would be a pretty straightforward route. We know we had the two Darkness energy. As it stands... He's at so close, I think. Does he hit basic energy off the top? No, he doesn't. Does he have any way to try and get three basic energy into his hand? I think that's the only thing that's missing. He can use Inteleon to go ahead and grab Clara for two energies and obviously get the Moltres back. He's already got Scoop Up Net to reuse a ton of Shady Deals. But one deck decision from Pedro is that he's playing that 1-1 one, one line of the, uh, the Elder Goss and Gossifleur to get energies into play. But he's not been able to establish that this game. And he only plays one copy of Energy Search. I wonder if it's uh, in the deck here. If it is accessible, I think he's got an easy path. But I'm not sure if he's already played it this turn. Oh, sorry, this game. I he hasn't. He doesn't really have any way to attack. And it may just be game over. The money may have just been too dangerous. Yeah, that Let's could see be what we awkward. can do here. It's always going to get the Shady Dealings in Teleon. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, there's always going to be the Clara option because he only plays one copy of the uh, Glarian Moltres. So that has to be a piece that he grabs. Uh, does he have access to that energy search? I think we're going to find out pretty soon because if, if, <laughs> if it's in there, you've got to think it's going to be grabbed. You know, those three. Oh, I oh, didn't I see it. It's there. Oh, I had a good look there. I did not see it. We got a boss's orders coming out as well as an alternate option or Dang. maybe something for next turn if there is a next turn. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to have to try and, I don't know, boss's orders this turn and hope to buy a freebie. Um, because, yeah, it just doesn't feel like he gets there. Really awkward that Pedro hasn't been able to develop his 1 1 line of the Elder Goss uh, <laughs> during this game because it really would have helped him out and protect him against this money a lot better. I mean, that's something else we did not think we were going to be talking about in top four of the IC this weekend. If only he'd got his 1-1 one, one line of Eldegoss. Now, we do have an echoing horn. Um, it's <laughs> just going to grab a Whimsicott here. Yeah. I don't think it changes all too much outside of just playing a card out of the hand for some reason. Uh, but he just doesn't really want to see this echoing horn anymore. I think he's just happy to use it. And I think it is going to be a boss's orders play this turn and just hope that Frank doesn't have access to enough switch outs here. I think the, the Echoing Horn would have been fantastic if there was a Bidoof uh, in the prize card. Oh, sorry, in the discard pile, because it would have been a two retreat cost Pokemon. Yes. But as it is, it's just going to be a pass from Pedro. The good news is Inteleon cannot be knocked out by this Whimsicott. The Trick Wind has that minus 20 reduction from double turbo. So it forces more than just a switch out from Frank here. He's also going to try and have to combine it with a boss's orders of his own. Yeah, absolutely. That double, yeah, that double turbo is a bit of a double-edged sword. Of course, we've got twin energy that can be used for Pokemon that don't have a rule box. Double turbo can be used by anyone, but it's got that downside. You've got to do 20 less damage. It's, it's a way of making the card a little bit more balanced, but sometimes that 20 damage can be absolutely huge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, as we've said many a time, Frank is not doing a whole lot of damage. He's trying to extend the game by slowly locking out his opponent and removing resources from play here. We are seeing straight away an energy attachment from Frank. We're seeing a tool scrap again rid of his own experience share here so he can draw an additional card from the barrel. You can see how important it is for Frank to hit this boss's orders. Oh, he does he close out the game. He's got a few more Insta playables, so he has one more industrious incisors to try and get over the line here and close out this first game of a best of three. Absolutely. You know, Pedro does still need to take two KOs. What I would have, and I know it wasn't an option because you need to get the energy on the Crobat to retreat. I would have loved to have seen an energy on a new Whimsicott here to give Frank access to that third Whimsicott during this game. I mean, attaching to the Crobat means you win this turn as long as you hit the boss's orders. Well, I, I mean, yes, there is that as well, Joe. <laughs> but I'm thinking if he whiffs the boss's True. orders. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong, but there it is. He doesn't whiff the boss's the orders. The second industrious incisors gets Frank the boss's orders required to go up one game in this series. A really intriguing back and forth there. Yeah, that one was nice. Frank takes that 1-0 victory in your, you know, your best of three. One game away now from making the final. And you're right, that was a really interesting back and forth. You know, there is that Urshifu, uh, and there's a question of, did Petro miss the V-Star power? Was he happy to give away those three prizes, knowing that it would get Moltres to, you know, really key numbers? And Petro was very, very close that game to actually pulling it off. There was that one key turn where it didn't work. And you know, you can see how fragile Frank's deck is. If you don't have multiple Whimsicott set up, your opponent can just take consecutive KOs. And at that stage, they are going to actually go and win the game. And that is that is a very fragile position to be in. It's kind of deck I can't play. I'm too nervous. <laughs> I hate having to attach multiple times with no energy acceleration. Because if you miss that energy at the wrong time, you literally just sit there and watch your opponent attack while being unable to respond. Yeah, don't let that prize race fool you. Pedro was very close to clawing back that game because had he been able to get just one basic energy into his hand that turn, he would have knocked out the only threat on Frank's board and then the Moltres would have not been able to get KO'd and it could have just carried through Pedro just with the boss's orders to close out the game. So he was genuinely very close there. The money was just crushing. And I wonder if in this next game, he's going to try and prioritize the Eldegoss that little bit more. Yeah, quite possibly. Eldegoss being able to get the energy could have been a big swing in that game. If you could search out a couple of energy and then attach them both to your Galarian Moltres, it just makes bringing that down so much easier. And we saw it last game with Gustavo was seeing it this game with Pedro. Being able to play that Galarian Moltres whenever you want it to take key KOs is huge. Oh, so, yeah. 
Yeah, it just would be nice. And I've been at Elder Gosses. Be nice, yeah. <laughs> Elder Gosses, it could be key. And we did see a slow start from Pedro there. So there is absolutely room for this to be a very different game and for Pedro to be going a lot faster. And let's face it, Pedro doesn't win at, at, at the worst Pedro ties. So you've got to think he's going to win game two. Yeah, uh, you'd like to think it, and uh, he may even just go first and try and put pressure on Frank again. He's been trying to pressurize energy attachments as much as anything else, and the more and more I think about it, the more intelligent I think it was to go in with that Urshifu and just sacrifice the three prizes, allow your Moltres to get dangerous as early as possible, force Frank into a fourth energy attachment, or well, a third attachment, but four energy onto the Whimsicott so that he couldn't have multiple threats established. Uh, it's almost like Frank like took the bait. It was too juicy to not take the big three prize KO, and um, yeah, I think that's the game plan that Pedro's had to go for here. I can't see him executing it any differently. He just has to hope that he can get a slightly better setup than he did in that uh, first game. No, absolutely not. You're not going to run through the game with your Rapid Strike Urshifu. So, you know, having that Galarian Moltres and, you know, making it as big and as imposing as you can, as fast as you can, you know, maybe giving up those three prizes was oh, the best thing that happened in that Pedro game. shaking his head. He's not happy with his start. He's a very emotional player. Uh, he's also a streamer, and he certainly is great at showing his emotions. But <laughs> as good as it can be to have a poker face, <laughs> Pedro is also letting us know that he is not happy with his start. He's He's also prized his one copy of Sword and Shield Intellion, which is a crucial piece as well. So uh, if his hand's not good, neither is uh, his prize cards. And I believe he chose to go first and simply pass to Frank, or he, uh, he certainly did the gesture there for Frank to begin the game. No, absolutely. And it does look like Frank has already got going. Once again, we're starting with that Rapid Strike Urshifu V, which we're still not entirely sure if, <laughs> if, if Pedro actually wants to or not. That one could really go either yeah. way. And then we've got a Whimsicott for Frank, gets out that Bidoof nice and early. And this, this is, again, you know, if you get the energy on the Whimsicott, maybe a second Bidoof, that's about all you want. Yeah, he seems pretty happy as long as he gets that energy drop down. Frank is going to take the time to look for his prizes this time around. Getting rid of that Tool Scrapper is a pretty easy uh, discard for him. He's going to be able to shuffle up now, and uh, we'll see if he has any other actions. But again, pretty content with just a turn attach and pass it over here. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need much. You just need to get that energy. If, if he whiffs an energy, then we're in a whole different game. And, you know, quite frankly, we, we saw Pedro's reaction. Now, I want to see Pedro's hand. I want to <laughs> see if it, it was I think worthy I saw Sonya, of that reaction. So I think, I think uh, we're not out of the water yet. And I think he also has Tower of Waters, actually. Uh, so we could, once again, try and work towards, like, Snorlax or a Keep Calling play on his turn. So it's not that he's just got nothing. I think he's just a little bit upset that there happened to be an Urshifu in the active position. <laughs> Absolutely. And to be fair, it would have to be a keep calling. Snorlax is chilling in the oh, prizes. True. He's sleeping. I'm sorry, Joe. He's, he ain't he's coming out. Nap. That's yeah. typical of him. I know, right? Lucky. <laughs> Lucky bear. <laughs> As, uh, are we going to see the uh, energy drop from Frank, or is that just all he has? Oh, I don't see. Taking his time, no yeah. energy drop. That is big for Pedro. This is uh, a really big deal because, as we've mentioned a few times, Frank's only form of like energy recovery, I guess, is the experience share. So he doesn't have any other way to accelerate. And uh, that means that Pedro is not going to be locked out of the game for a while. And it might give uh, Pedro a bit of help here at getting his board set up. He's going to kick things off with that Sonya. Yeah, he's going to go and get himself a couple of basic Pokemon or a couple of basic energy, probably basic Pokemon at this stage of the game. You know, get that bench rolling, get those Pokemon. Obviously, nice deck search, see what's prized, see what's available, see what's not. You know, finding out now that that Snorlax is not available because we know, you know, with Tower of Waters in his hand, like you said, that would be a really nice option to get rolling turn one. So it could be a keep calling with Sobble, yeah, try I, and get those you know rapid strike Pokemon out early. I think he has to go for basic energy here because I think he has Quick Ball in hand. Uh, so if you go the energy route, it means that you can uh, do one of those early game attacks from either yeah. Sobble or even the Gossifler if he wants to go ahead and use the Call for Family option. Uh, and it establishes uh, that extra basic as well into play. Uh, that's the only upside of the um, going the Gossifler route, because of course Sobble can't help you get uh, Gossifler because it's not a Rapid Strike uh, Pokemon. But if you get the Gossifler, it means you can go triple Sobble and still have the uh, Goss in play. But no, it is going to be the Sobble option here. Um, and we're just going to see a keep calling by the looks of things. Yeah, that absolutely has got to be the right play here. Get those basic Pokemon out, get them on the bench, knowing that you've actually you've gained a little bit of time here. Because Frank's had a slow start, because Frank with that energy attachment, you know that you've got 
you've got a little bit of time here. You've got a turn or two to start getting established. Um, and I like this. Build up your threats, do what you can do, and hopefully, you know, be a little more proactive and maybe just start swinging with that Urshifu and force Frank to take it out while also potentially having, you know, what you need in hand to get that Galarian Moltres rolling. Yep, and it looks like we're going to be seeing at least a couple Sobel here. It's going to be the whole suite of Sobel uh, rather than grabbing the Remoraid. That was the only other rapid option uh, in Pedro's deck. He's going to have one more quick search of his um, prize cards to see what's what. Uh, knowing that he has this time access to a lot more basic energies will be helpful for him. But you can't be too happy to see your one copy of the Sword and Shield Inteleon in those prizes. That is going to be a little bit awkward for him. Let's not forget, though, he is playing Peonia in his list, I believe. Uh, yeah, he does. So he could access that um, Inteleon sooner than you think. Yeah, and that would be quite nice. You know, Shady Dealings for one trainer is good, but Shady Dealings for two trainers. Oh, yeah. That's what you're all about. Oh, that's a whole different kettle of fish that is. That is very <laughs> nice. And uh, things will pass over to Frank now as we see Pedro with a little notepad off to the side, making sure that he is aware of what is in those prizes because he could easily look towards using a Peonia. Frank immediately replaces the Tower of Waters with a Path to the Peak. This time, Pedro won't be getting quite as much value. And let's see if Frank has much going on here. He's playing everything a little bit slowly, and he only has boss's orders, but it's been barrel time. Will these three cards help him out? We see an Attachment, and we see Fog Crystal, and Evolution Incense. These were all great pickups. These were great pickups. The issue is you've, you've got a Whimsicott in the active with EXP Shade. You don't really want to put the energy on that one. The whole point is of EXP show that you want your bench Pokemon to take the energy using it. Now, there are two copies. There is another one there in the deck, and maybe that is actually going to end up being enough. But, you know, if you're using free Whimsicott, you really want both those EXP shed to come out and give value. We do see Fog Crystal coming out and getting that basic energy. And this is going to be where we find out, is there a second Whimsicott maybe to go on the bench with the energy? Or is it going to go on the active and that EXP share is unfortunately lost. Yeah, I think it was just an EXP share being played to help him draw an additional card oh, with yeah. the bit barrel. Uh, but with the basic Psychic being chosen over anything else means we could even see a Fluffball Star just for the 60 damage route, just to initiate a prize race here. And yeah, that's what we're going to see. It could easily be a V-Star power used in a different way here, potentially. Uh, Frank could also just pass it over. Yeah, could KO yeah, one of those holding off. he wanted, but chooses not to. Holding off just because he could then fall prey to the Cheryl shenanigans of the Urshifu VMAX. So keeping that in the bank for later as Pedro does have a reprieve for this turn and uh, can start using his incenses to get Drizzle dancing. Absolutely. Did have an option to take out a Bent Sobble, because of course Fluffle yeah. Star does hit any Pokemon on the field. But when there's four Sobble down, does taking one of them out really give you enough value? There's a strong argument that it doesn't. Yeah, so it's also interesting from Frank to almost like not tell Pedro, give him the information that there's the double turbo already chilling in his hand. So <laughs> Pedro could play slightly differently, hoping that Frank misses double turbo energy because he's had a slightly slower start. And as you can see, he didn't have supporter for turn. So um, it also doesn't give away that information to Pedro. And that's a small aspect of why he's gone for the psychic energy first here. No, absolutely. And I think that's a fair point. We do see Drizzle coming down here with another shady dealings. Let him get one more trainer. And, you know, I mean, are we working towards an attack with Urshifu here? There doesn't really seem to be much other in terms of viable attack. As you know, in Pedro's deck, you've got Hooper, which could put some early damage on. But that's really about it. We're going to see, as we know, Drizzle dancing. It could be a Peonia turn, if nothing else. Uh, you could just go ahead and Drizzle, knowing that you have uh, a decent chance of pulling out that... Um, large and Teleon from those prizes, the 50-50 shot. Because uh, I'm not sure what other supporter is all that helpful this turn. He could go for something like a Bird Keeper, perhaps, as well. Yeah, get that switch, draw those three Avery cards for the draw well. three. Keeping the option of Bird Keeper around for later, or possibly, again, that was a card that may even be in those prizes. I can't remember myself now. It, they're all blending into one, these games, because there are just <laughs> far too many one-offs, and we've seen way too much Urshifu on stream this weekend. <laughs> not in a bad way, by the way. You'll no, 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 of course, of course. In all, in all of its glory. And the thing is, you know, whereas you can look at a lot of Mew decks and they look very similar, you can look at these Urshifu <laughs> decks. You know, we've been referring to the North American way to build it and the European way sure. to build it. So it's it really has been just a different kind of beast this weekend, just looking at all the different ways this deck yeah. can actually be built. I mean, Gustavo, Pedro, Tord, uh, Isaiah, all doing really well, all with very individual lists, and Justin, of course, as well, uh, all playing very different builds and all seeing success. So there's many methods of making this Urshifu VMAX deck work. 
No, absolutely. So we do see Pedro here just having a little bit of a think. He's having a look at his hand. He does have the VMAX in hand if he wants it. And we do see a rapid strike energy. Yep, taking it's allowed. It. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we did not see the attack from Whimsicott. You know, we didn't see a trick win. So as it stands at the moment, you are allowed to do this. It's very vulnerable to fan of waves. But Pedro never really used more than one energy at a time outside of that Galerian Moltres game one. So this doesn't seem to be a particularly big deal. Yeah, I think Pedro making sure there's no resistance here because he may be going for an okay strafe option. <laughs> it doesn't really feel great, uh, but you could go for it nonetheless. We could even see a just leave it in the active sort of option here and say that, hey, I could be Sherling at the very least. It's going to be a poke for 30 with Gale Thrust. It didn't come into the active this turn. He's just evolved into it. And uh, yeah, it's not a lot of damage, but it's all Pedro really could do here. The Fan of Waves is going to come down straight away, deny the Rapid Strike energy. Uh, that is how Frank's deck is built. It has a ton of energy denial and removal. And Frank's finally got his way into a supporter card as well. And it's going to be an Avery removing likely one of these Sobbles from Pedro. It's awkward because he's holding Evolution Incense, but he only has one Drizzar remaining. Remaining, uh, but that's going to be his selection nonetheless. Ped, uh, sorry, Frank is able to get an additional three cards here. Will he be able to continue and get some additional Whimsicott into play? Yes, yes he is will. The easy op <laughs> is, the, is the short answer. Yes, indeed. And uh, yeah, looks like Frank is pretty happy with his board state once again. The Industrious Incisors and the Avery coming in to help out here and there. And it's going to be a pretty simple trick wind. We know Pedro, I think, is holding on to uh, the Cheryl. So this damage isn't going to be all that important. But Frank at least has to force the likes of Cheryl out rather than draw supporters. No, which is quite nice. And... You know, that poke for 30, remember, it actually works out quite nice. You know, if Frank ever ends up with four prizes, oh, sorry, if, yeah, Frank ends up with four prizes taken, yeah. then that Galarian Moltres actually hits 220. So that extra 30 did end up, you know, last game, yeah. there would have been a point that would have been pretty big. So it's here, it, it's do you Cheryl, do you try and do a big attack and just give up the Urshifu, uh, knowing that your Galarian Moltres is then going to come out? Yeah, it's a tough one, and this Evolution Incense is not nearly as good as it could be with the likes of uh, Inteleon in the prizes, but he does still have access to quick shooting if he wants to start getting even more prep damage around the board. He is already holding on to scoop up nets, so he may just be grabbing this to get a little bit of extra value before a scoop up net anyway, which he would have used to um, pick up the Drizzle for extra dealing. Yeah, quite possibly. That it would absolutely work. You know, that quick shooting drops two damage counters. That's always a good thing. So it's just the different options here. And, you know, maybe you can build that up over a few turns. Maybe you can end up taking some cheeky KOs. Maybe you can put it, you know, on the Whimsicott. Because as it stands at the moment, if Frank takes a KO, then you're only actually going to be seeing your Galarian Moltres do 170. So, you know, maybe you combine quick shooting with another poke for 30. Mm -hmm. And then you actually get that KO on Whimsicott when they've only taken three prizes. Yeah. And then, of course, we're in a very similar situation to last game. Frank is not stacking energy. There's no EXP share. As it stands at the moment, Pedro is once again in a situation where back-to-back -back KOs on Whimsicott V-Star would essentially end the game. So you're right. The 30 damage pokes could certainly be relevant here. Pedro might be eyeing up a Peonia rather than a Cheryl, which is super interesting. Again, he could just be leaving this VMAX in the active as a sacrificial lamb to help him get towards um, the Galarian Moltres being a bigger threat. Yeah, and like I said, I think if we're going down this route, we'll see a poke, we'll see the quick shooting, and then, you know, really working on that Galarian Moltres for next turn. You've got to offset the 50 damage that you're losing from your opponent only having taken three prizes rather than four. But poke for 30 with Urshifu, quick shooting for 20. There you go. That's the 50 jobs are good in. Here we go. Will Pedro pick the right half of the prize cards? <laughs> and, uh, looking like a no. That is a pretty awkward Birdkeeper, Raihan, oh. and Inteleon. The three he would have wanted, he got none of them. And you, you saw the reaction. There was kind of a, a visible drop of the head there going, I did not find the right ones. I play, I play this card just to get cards out of my discard. <laughs> I had a 50, shaking his 50 head. chance. I know the feeling. I mean, not now, man. It's literally uh, the face that he's pulling. Even behind a mask, we can all tell. <laughs> I mean, we, we have all been there. We've all had cards prized. But it's okay because we've got ways to get them out of the prizes. No wait, that failed as well. <sighs> you can't 
help but feel bad for Pedro. He's <laughs> against a whimsical V-Star deck in the first place, and he's having to play his heart out here. We know that he's come so f close in so many tournaments. You know, he got top four at the World Championships, so close yet so far, and he's so hungry to do well at all of these events, but sometimes the cards just don't fall in your favor, and this Peonia really hasn't done him many f hel uh, much help here. No, unfortunately, it really hasn't. So there we do see the quick shooting on the active Whimsicott, as we expected. We do see Snorlax coming down here, so, you know, we could see... Well, like Hooper and an energy drop as well, but I think nonetheless he doesn't have many switching options. He's just going to have to pass it over to Frank here. I think Pedro's only real pivots for the Urshifu VMAX is the tower that was already uh, played and the bird keeper that was in his prize cards. Oh, that is unfortunate. And with quick shooting and Galarian Moltres next turn, we're actually going to see it being 10 damage short, assuming Frank takes this KO, which you've got to kind of assume he's going to. Yep, a quick crushing hammer coming in as well, not too shabby, as well as going to be the Trick Wind and taking uh, three prize cards. Uh, the Judge Jazz uh, there, just making sure that the, <laughs> the head flip isn't counted <laughs> as damage, which is actually super relevant, as you've just mentioned. Uh, Pedro has been prepping up this Whimsicott V-Star, but Frank going down halfway through this game two in terms of prize cards and uh, is once again looking in a very decent spot. Yeah, I mean, Pedro's looking for 200 damage here and Galeria Moltres will do 170. Quick shooting, is there a choice span? Oh, look at this hand. I think he's holding on to... Scoop up net and Medicham. That really does feel bad. The Peonia has hurt him very, <laughs> like a lot. As we are going to see more quick shooting set up here. And it's just going to be a Gormandise for a fresh hand by the looks of things, because what he's got right now ain't much to work with. No, there was a route, though, to use quick shooting, scoop up net, evolve a bench drizzle into it, and then you can quick shooting again. But that would have involved having a lot more resources. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> he does not have. And, of course, now that Galerian Moltres is on the bench, oh, he doesn't look at have this. any energy. He's also been able to... Uh, well, Frank's been able to money away the big Gormandizer and make oh. life even more awkward for Pedro. Another double turbo coming in and the second copy of EXP share. Pedro really tried to win uh, the first game, not via a straight prize race. He was just trying to deal with threats. And now it feels very routine for Frank to be able to just make three Whimsicots happen this game. Yeah, and that's the problem. We've now got a Whimsicott in the active with free energy, a Whimsicott on the bench with free energy, and a Whimsicott on the bench with an EXP share. So you can, you can manually attach twice. It doesn't need to be double turbo, uh, excuse me, yeah, double turbo energy. And Frank will have that third Whimsicott going. So Pedro is going to have to take out three of them to win this game. Frank's up by three prizes. This is not the same game one that Pedro came extremely close right. to winning. I think Frank has very much put himself in a driver's seat for this game. Yeah, despite Frank having that slightly slower start, Pedro has been even more unfortunate, yeah. which isn't great. And uh, we are seeing Frank just play some quick balls out, thinning an extra Bidoof, which he doesn't feel like he needs, so that he can get the incisors rolling once again to draw up some cards here. Um, because he's only mined so far, so we are going to see, uh, I believe, three cards here. He's got into an extra crushing hammer, which he may just want to hold for now. It doesn't seem all that relevant on the Drizzile, as he's going to take another KO, just two knockouts away from booking his place in the finals. Yeah, this is looking very, very nice. It's, it's going to be so hard. You know, one of the things we talk about is, is stacking attackers, making sure that you've got an answer, because Pedro can't knock out all of these in one go. Marnie's so, been awful as well. <laughs> Pedro really doesn't have much to work with once again, I don't think. No, Echoing Horn gets a Bidoof onto the bench, which doesn't really make any difference. We do finally see Gossifleur hitting the bench. It's going to be a cameo by the looks of things. I mean, look at this hand from Pedro. He's got a unusable Rapid Strike energy, a not helpful fighting energy, and also a not very helpful Moltres right now. Pedro is saying, you choose Frank. <laughs> <laughs> He's really not too happy, but yeah, we're going to see the retreat here from Pedro and show off the lovely uh, Gossifleur here. Uh, but yeah, that's about all he can do. We are going to see the fighting energy attachment for the call for family. Pedro going out in style and hey, he's at least enjoying his Pokemon today. He is. And let's face it, right? Top four of an international championship is Getting pretty awesome. Oh, good. He's just saying Frank let it end. <laughs> <laughs> so we do see Fog Crystal 4 in energy going on there. We're using the V-Star power to is. get a KO on the Metacham and Frank is going to be in the finals of the European International Championships with Whimsicott. Man, what a story here. Frank really is putting his name up in lights with Whimsicott, proving that he is a really creative deck builder 
but also has the chops in game to get the job done against Pedro, who was trying to be exceptionally crafty in that first game and really did create some challenges for Frank there. The cards really did fall for Pedro in that second game and Frank had a much better time of things. So he can rest easy knowing that he's got yet another Urshifu, the only thing standing in his way for his final game tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Three Urshifu in a row, two down, <laughs> one to go. That was that was a very interesting game. The first one was extremely close, could have gone either way. The second one, Pedro stumbled a little bit. That Marnie had a huge impact. And then as soon as you had those multiple whims, you knew it was over. Shout out to Pedro, though, for that excellent oh, way him. to end the game. Yeah. Using Gossifleur to call for family to Medicham. <laughs> just putting it there saying, go on, Frank, use your V-Star power, get into the final. <laughs> that is a good amount of sportsmanship right there. Oh, he's a great spirited player.